his career of 18 years working around the world, he has contributed to many innovative and challenging projects in architecture and urban design. Now his biggest dream of all is to be local again and make a difference. So here is Andrew. Aloha. Aloha. So, well, like many of you, I grew up in this wonderful place called Paradise. And, um, well, you know, when I was uh, growing up here, my friends would go to school, uh, go to the beach after school, and I um, s somehow hung out uh, at art class and read about Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, and I was fascinated by the idea of being a Renaissance man. <laughs> and so somehow I associated architecture and design to the uh, traits of being a well-rounded creative. And so for the last 18 years, I've been working on everything from train stations to bridges to master plans, public spaces, even an iPad case. And it started off with Uncle Alan that kind of told me that if I wanted to be an architect and a designer like him, that I should really get my butt off the island and mm -hmm. uh, go and see the world and... Uh, Learn some new languages and new cultures, meet some new mentors, but don't forget to come back. So I was a little bit dazed and confused and I ended up in uh, Holland, on the other side of the world, and uh, I ended up being part of an artist community on the uh, west side of Rotterdam, at a time when it was going through urban uh, renewal, very much like Kakaoko. And uh, we were the watchdogs of the neighborhood, and uh, but we were also representing the new energy, the catalyst, if you will, of the new uh, changing area. And I, I found myself having this new lifestyle where every day was uh, riding a bicycle. I didn't have a car for the next six to eight years. And uh, a typical weekend was uh, going to uh, the market, the open market, and buying fresh fruits and vegetables, bumping into a friend, going to uh, the terrace, and then having a beer, and then spontaneously having dinner parties. And so I was very fascinated about how this city was able to provide this infrastructure for me. The interconnectivity of all the bicycle lanes and the proximity to the open spaces and the, even the width of the, the sidewalk that allowed the terraces to be opened. And um, so I was fascinated about how the Dutch designed their cities. And you know, like Hawaii, uh, Holland's a very small place and small country and they only have a limited amount of land to develop. And so they decided to contain many of their urban development uh, so to create this kind of very intimate and dense uh, uh, living situation. At the same time, um, preserve a lot of uh, landscape and agriculture. And um, so their view of landscape is a little bit different in a way that, you know, it's not just looking at the tree here and that's landscape or the park next door and that's landscape. But landscape is this kind of coherent notion of putting everything together, you know, the hardscape, the the architecture, the softscape, you know? It's not only about what I do with my plot of land and what I'm gonna make here, but how am I, pe how am I gonna build something on this piece of land that complements that? And uh, together we can uh, make something better uh, to, to be part of the system, to give to, give to um, the community. So if you have that kind of dialogue between the city and the uh, developers and the users and the master planners, then there's this kind of um, notion of trying to build the city together and trying to create some, something very social and vibrant community. So professionally, I was working on larger and larger projects. And this is a project in Dublin, um, uh, just outside. And we created a, a master plan and landscape vision with a sort of continuous waterfront, uh, building with nature and building with heritage. And we didn't only look at um, building buildings and how high the buildings go, but also the building, the spaces in between the buildings. We created amenity spaces, green spaces, not, um, so that we can support the new development, so that everybody had prime location, location, location. Not only the people in water, uh, in front of water. And uh, we not only looked at the architecture itself or how high you can build, but we looked at the streetscape from facade to facade. Was it wide enough where we can build um, uh, a street with uh, trees and a light rail and uh, uh, bus lanes and um, bicycle lanes and a, a very, very very nice pedestrian area? So maybe this could be King Street one day. So architecturally, um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be part of uh, the national team 
design team for Central Station in Rotterdam. Um, and among many, many things, I, one, one, one of the things I designed was uh, underground parking for 10,000 bicycles. Wow. So it's very interesting. So this, this is my four Ps for a very successful, uh, sustainable uh, uh, urban plan or vision. People, profit for the diverse diversity of businesses, small businesses, planet, our attitude towards sustainability. And of course, it's all tied together in making a, a, a place that uh, we feel we belong to. So this, I, I was in Colombia and I met uh, this man, Pedro Medina, yep, amigo. And um, he's the founder of Yo Creo in Colombia, I believe in Colombia. And he's told me that, you know, we have this issue where our youth, our talented youth, we are, are told to go to places like the United States to study, but they never come back. And, you know, we're here to empower them. So that struck a chord with me, and I thought maybe it's time for me to come home and bring back my experiences from abroad and empower our youth here and uh, tell our youth to maybe go and see the world, but make sure to come back and uh, uh, harness our talent, our, our talent pool. But I'm also back, you know, because I think Paradise uh, could use some improvement. You know, this is Dillingham up there. You don't see a single spot of green. Um, I'm not against uh, density, but you know, it could be more coherent <laughs> um, or large um, footprints of highways. So I decided to leverage my reach and I joined uh, Architects Hawaii recently, a group of talented designers with a tremendous aloha spirit. And together I hope to, uh, we, we hope to address a lot of urban challenges, uh, but most of all, uh, be excited about the opportunity to come to uh, make a better uh, island and um, a better state. So that's my story, thank you very much. I'm uh, happy to connect and discuss with uh, anybody that's interested.